What is up mobility people today? We're gonna go through a quick little mobility set I like to do to get loose before a big workout. It's kind of long, it's about a 30 minute one, but if you have the time to commit to it, um, I'm sure you'll be feeling good right afterwards. So everything's gonna be 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off, and we're gonna do two separate sets for three rounds a piece. Uh, first one's gonna be a walkout. We've been here before. Feet are about to be shoulder width apart. You'll basically bend down like you're gonna touch your toes and then you'll walk your hands out as far as your mobility allows. If you want to, you can throw a push up here at the bottom and then you'll walk your way all the way back up to that standing pose and you'll go through for the full 45 seconds on. Once you're done with that, you'll take 15 seconds of rest and you'll go into a squat to stand. Again, feet just outside shoulder width apart now. What I want you to do now is I want you to plant your hands on the floor or you can put them on top of your feet or under your toes. And then I'm just gonna have you shoot your hips down and then shoot your hips up and you'll just floss between this kind of squatted position and then having your butt really high in the air. You'll work for the full 45 seconds on. You'll take your 15 seconds of rest. After that, you're gonna go to an assisted cross hack squat. So for this, you're gonna have your feet nice and wide. Your hands are gonna come down and basically you're just gonna walk them side to side and then basically just swap, swap your lunge and you'll be able to see that your inner thigh really fires off. Oh man, it's starting to rain here in Sacramento today. Oh, good thing we're inside. So you work for that full 45 seconds on. You'll take your 15 seconds of rest after that, you're going to do Spider-Man steps with a hamstring stretch. What that looks like is you're going to come down into an up plank position. And now I'm going to drive my left foot right next to my left hand. I'm going to make little circles with my hips here. Something I just like to do to get a good stretch. And now to get into your hamstring stretch, there's a couple ways you can do it. First one is you can just straighten your front leg and frame your front foot and lean over that front leg. This is gonna get you a nice stretch of the hamstring. And then if you do this one, I like to floss between having my chest as tall as I can. You'll get a stretch across this hip flexor here on the back and then the hamstring and go forward and back. The other way you can do it is you can plant your back knee and now again, you can frame your front foot and then just lean back. You'll straighten that front leg and then you'll floss forward Sometimes I like to lift the hands up, lift the chest. You'll feel the stretch across the hips, and then you'll come back down. So take your pick. You'll do 45 seconds on on one side, and then 45 seconds on the other side. Make sure we're nice and even. And again, either the standing hamstring stretch or the kneeling, whatever kind of floats your boat is good with me. So... After you get through those two Spider-Man steps with a hamstring stretch, you'll be going back to the top for two more rounds from the top. Uh, after you complete those three rounds, you're gonna move into our second set here, which is gonna start off with a deep squat, curl to press variation. So these are all, again, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. The weight here is optional. Uh, you don't need it to get a good mobility flow. Uh, but I'm just going to show the weighted and unweighted version. So you'll squat down into what I'll call a deep squat here, chest nice and tall. Notice how I'm not here. I'm nice and tall in the chest. I'm going to put the kettlebell. In this case, I've got a kettlebell. You can use a dumbbell too. I'm just going to show you with a kettlebell. Um, I'm going to put it in my right hand, and I'm going to curl with my right, and then I'm going to press up overhead. And then I'm going to bring it down all the way back down to the floor and then repeat. Notice how my left hand, my non-working hand, goes into the floor and then drives into my left inner thigh. And then I twist with my body to press up overhead and then repeat the pattern. So I'd go through this side for 45 seconds on. After I'm done on this side, I'll switch. So now my left hand's on the kettlebell. Right hand's going to stay planted into the ground. And now I'm going to curl and press up on the left side and repeat for the full working set. After I'm done with that other side, I'm going to get into an elevated glute bridge hold. 
Oh, okay. So to do this, um, I like doing it with an elevated surface because I'm not quite good enough at them on the floor yet. Uh, can make it a little bit easier for you. So what you need to do is you'll get onto the ground and you'll place your feet up on to an elevated surface. Now it could be a coffee table. It could be, uh, you know, a bench like I have. Just something that gets you off the ground a bit. And now what I want you to do is I want you to throw your hips up nice and high. Next step now is I'm going to drive my hands under the heads of my shoulders. And then if I can, I'm going to press into the ground. Woo! There I go, lose my head. <laughs> Look at that. That was good. That was good for us to see. Hang on. Let me reset here. Hat back on. Mic's still good. Maybe what I'll do here. Let's try this. So maybe have it on not a slick surface. We'll put that on the mat and see if this improves. So round two, nice and close to the bench. Feet are gonna go flat, hands up here by the heads of the shoulders. And then again, on three, I'll pick up two, three, all the way up and I'll hold for as long as I can. If I can do the full 45, I will. Otherwise I'll come down nice and easy. And then I will be repeating for the full 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. Woo Lost the hat. I'm sure my hair looks lovely. But it's not about my hair. It's about your movement. So we're going to keep rolling. Woo! I'm starting to get sweaty. All right. Last movement pattern here. Let me slide this back over out of the way. It's going to be what I like to call the shoulder waiter. Um... Super technical term, I know, but it looks like you're kind of holding a, holding a tray at a restaurant. So first step is you're going to be taking your left hand. I'm just going to plant it here on my hips. Right hand's going to be out here towards the side. And the goal is to keep my right hand as flat as I can the whole time I'm moving through the pattern. So first thing I'm going to do is bring my right hand in towards my armpit. Basically try and get it to touch almost. And now I'm going to try and keep my chest nice and straight. So notice how I'm already leaning over like this to cheat. I'm going to try and stay nice and straight up, and then I'm trying to swing my hand in a nice big circular pattern up and around. So hand comes in towards the armpit, then out behind me a little bit, up and all the way around. This is going to get your shoulder nice and loose, and you'll go for the full 45 seconds of work. And then once you're done with 45 seconds on one side, you'll switch. I bet when I watch this later, I'm going to be like, damn, dude, your shoulder mobility is not as good as you think it is. Ha <laughs> ha. That's probably true. Working through the full time. That's why we work to improve. There it is. And once we're done with the 45 seconds on, on this side, we'll take our 15 seconds off and then go back to the top with the deep squat rotations. The elevated group bridge and then two more of those shoulder waders. Good luck. Let me know how you guys do. Make sure this is on a, uh, a uh, non-slick surface when you give it a shot. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.